How you guys doing today? My name is Kelsey Jacobs, and this is a couple weeks into our ACNI interview program series. So today I have Savannah Taylor here with the Silhouette brand, and she's going to share with us a little bit more about herself. Savannah? Yes, yeah, thank you so much, Kelsey. I'm super excited. So once again, my name is Savannah Taylor. I am a native of Springfield, Massachusetts, and a recent graduate of Syracuse University, um, where I got my bachelor's degree in African American Studies and a minor in Communication and Rhetorical Studies. I am 22 years old, and I am the founder and chief visionary officer of the So What brand. So super excited to talk about what we do. Thank you. So let's just jump right into it. So can you tell us the purpose of the Silhouette brand and why you think it's important? Absolutely. So founded upon the belief that, you know, social change really has to start within ourselves and in order to manifest outward, the Silhouette brand really is out to redefine how black and brown folks are personified, whether that be in the media, in the fields of business, tech, whatever, and just really showcase you know, undiscovered and unfocused on uh, innovators who are seeking to cultivate a more inclusive society. So really creating platforms and spaces for people who identify as either part of the African diaspora, black and brown, to share their stories and truths, their visions, hopes, dreams, and really just create stories that are meaningful in order to inspire other people. And I, I think the brand really focuses on storytelling and dialogue as a source of change and a source of resistance. So really focusing on those methods of storytelling to create um, community and to create a more, like I said, equitable society. Those are very important things and I'm glad you touched upon that. So mm -hmm. as an inspiration, I know that it takes some creative moments to kind of get stuff going when you want to get things running. So can you tell us about an outrageously creative moment that you've had either in, within the brand or like personally? Yeah, I think um, I am like a tourist through and through, so sometimes spontaneity is like really not my thing. <laughs> but I really think, um, you know, when you have those moments of just random creativity, that's when the best ideas come to be. But something that I really think about is when I first started out in 2017, um, my university hosts this thing called Coming Back Together, and it's where all the Black and Latinx uh, past um, and current students just come back and network and, you know, just laugh and share stories and such. And it's really a great opportunity to connect with the greater um, community. But then there's always like a concert or something. And um, Layla Hathaway was the headliner for this concert. And I was like, you know, I'm a little young, but like Layla Hathaway is like super dope. Like, you know what I mean? Like, right. <laughs> that's like what my parents were to So I knew that she was going to be there. And I was starting out with this little what brand. And I was like, dang, like, how cool would it be? to get her to, you know, share her story, talk about what it's like to identify as like a black woman and her creativity and her own story, especially, you know, she's like royalty, music royalty. So um, I kind of figured out and finessed a way to get backstage, how to pull a few strings, me and my friends, how to get a little bit creative. <laughs> but um, we got there, but we were able to talk to her and just, you know, talk about what it's like to be black and to be young and black and gifted and to just, you know, share stories and want to inspire other people. So it was really one of the best conversations that I've just had in general. So I think through my ability to finesse and kind of maneuver and <laughs> think on my feet was one of my more creative moments, and it turned out to be really great. So um, it's one of my favorite interviews, and I think it really inspired me to continue with this mission that I'm going to have for the Silhouette Brand. Well, I'm glad you mentioned mission. So the next question we have for you is, who are you? And tell us more about you and the Silhouette brand. Give us a little background story. Yeah, sure. So um, like I mentioned, I did get my um, degree in African American Studies. And like, always, I was like, okay, like, what can I major in that's going to keep me engaged? And also something that I love. And like, I just like, love being Black. That's something that I've always enjoy it's a pride and I know that's not always the case for other people and especially I mean we see it now people are telling us that it's not cool or it's not you shouldn't be so proud to be black it's anti-white or not American whatever that means that's something I always took pride in so I think however I've chosen to move throughout this world in my life so far has always been with the intent to promote blackness and to promote black unity and solidarity. So I think that's a large part of who I am and something that I take pride in as, as a black woman, but also 
and the work that I aim to do. Just every job that I've had up to this point, I just really want to instill a sense of pride within Black and Brown people that it's okay to be Black. And it's okay to learn more, but also the intent of learning because we haven't had that education. We haven't had, you know, in our schools, we've been taught about our history. So it's really important that we take that opportunity amongst ourselves through talking with other Black people and talking with other um, scholars and people who aren't scholars who have that oral history and that history to share. So um, that's a large part of who I am and again, why I wanted to start the Civil Web Brand because that dialogue is something that is historically was stripped from us. So it's something that, you know, we have to reclaim. So that's a large part of how I choose to identify myself. And I think that's really been showcased through my work as well. All right, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, that was actually very inspirational. So. Could you share with us a few sources of your inspiration for the Silhouette brand and for yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Once again, like, honestly, just being Black. Like, honestly, being Black is such a privilege, and it's just so dope. Like, there's so many just sources of inspiration everywhere from all different, because being Black is not a monolith. We come in all shapes, sizes, complexities, different mm -hmm. backgrounds, and that's the beauty of it, that we don't always get to see that. So I think whenever I'm able to talk to somebody new or hear about something, a fact of history that I didn't know before, or a new business, black owned business that I didn't know about before. I think that's so inspirational. And I get like, I really get chills just learning about black and brown people who are, you know, finding their truth and walking in that and being able to push that forward. So that's always something that, like this moment that we're seeing right now, although, you know, it's very unfortunate what we're experiencing, but it's so inspirational to see people utilizing their voices and knowing their, uh, the power of their collective voice. So that's right. something that always inspires me. Right. Well, thank you for that. And I hope people yeah. get some inspiration from that. So yeah. in your own terms, how do you get everything to come together? In terms of like the business, like how, like just like the overall strategy yes. for it? Honestly, um, I, I feel like I've winged it. Like, to be completely honest, I never really thought of the work that I initially thought to do as even being a business. Like, for me, um, on my school campus, I was surrounded by so many, like, hustlers and people, who, you know, who own the title of entrepreneur and who really, um, even, like, my father is, like, a really self-made entrepreneur who's owned several businesses. I never felt like I fit into that, not because I didn't want to, but I just felt like it wasn't it for me or that wasn't, like, I wasn't in the right space to do that so right. honestly I think it takes like and I mean I think it just had to relinquish a lot of that fear and that unknown and that like voice in your head saying you know like maybe you're not really taught for it and just like choosing one to just do it because other people do that all the time so like why can't you so I think that was a large part of my strategy letting go of that fear and that voice in my head and then just being able to like figure out what is it that I want to do. I have several filled notebooks just with things written out and notes and open tags on my laptop, just figuring out, okay, what is it that I want to do? Um, how can I be of service? How can this brand be of service? How can it inspire people? Um, let's the niche. Um, what will this brand do that other brands or other businesses aren't doing? What is the need that it needs to address? And I feel like once I was able to kind of triage these things, then I was able to all right, figure out what's the strategy, what's the approach, what's the communications plan, what are the visuals, like all of these other things that you like to see in the output that you usually see as the output. So a lot of figuring out internally, like what's my purpose, mm -hmm. and then figuring out what's the best way to approach and go about it. Okay, that's good. Speaking mm -hmm. of figuring out, I know we mentioned um, this unforeseen time a little earlier, but how mm -hmm. have you personally been co coping with um, COVID-19 and this whole pandemic? Yeah, like, I'm not going to hold you, it was rough. <laughs> I think yeah. the biggest thing was, yeah, like, especially being, like, the class of 2020, just letting go that things were not going to turn out the way that you wanted them to That's turn crazy. out. They're not, what you thought was going to happen in January was not happening come March. Like, I think that was the biggest thing, letting go of that. It was almost like grieving a little bit. You know, you worked hard four years, five years. However, and then, you know, you get to this point and it's like, oh, no graduation, <laughs> no walk across the stage, right. uh, no job offers. And I think that was a really, you know, low point and it was super bummed, at least for my whole life. Um, 
coach would let me know too. Like I feel like a lot of, especially black and brown kids, we've been groomed a lot. So a lot of us have been groomed that it's like, you have to go to college, you have to do this, but that's the only way that you will make it for us, for people who look like us. And that idea that you have to work 10 times as hard to get half of what, you know, white people get or anybody else to clean off that privilege. So, you know, you work hard and you do the right things and you do what you're supposed to do, textbook, and then it's like, I don't know, graduation. So that was really <laughs> hard. <laughs> you know, like, what well, you have to show for it. So that was most definitely hard to grapple with. But then I think, you know, it's unfortunate, you know, people are losing their lives and their loved ones. And it's been an unfortunate time. But I truly believe that things happen for a reason. And this is truly a forced cause, a time for people, you know, to reevaluate what are we doing here? What needs to be changed? Yep. What needs to be addressed? Um, personally, like, what are you, what haven't you been doing to take care of yourself that you need to start doing? What are some things that you kind of, you know, let fall by the wayside that you need to pick back up? And honestly, the solo brand was one of those things that had become my baby, but I wasn't taking care of my baby the way I needed to. Right. You know, I got caught up in school and I got caught up in um, organizations. I got caught up in so many things that I lost sight of my true passion. So COVID-19 has really allowed me to take a step back, reevaluate and figure out how I can really move with this because for me, you know, I was job offers, things I was looking at were getting cut, they were getting frozen. That was really hard to deal with because I always had this image in my head of what my life after college was going to look like, and that wasn't it. So um, I think this time was, uh, in a sense, therapeutic, but also just made, made me like really face some harsh realities mm. and really, you know, figure out, okay, how am I going to move with this right now? It's like, not, ex not exactly the breaking point, but this can make or break, you know, what things are going to like do something. You're not going to get this time again. So how can you be productive? How can you take care of yourself? I know my mental health is something that I'm really learning to prioritize and really take seriously. Um, got a grip on my anxiety of like, like do more tactics, to, like deal with that, knowing what things trigger me so that I can be productive, not for capitalistic sake, but actually productive to me and the service that I want to produce. So um, being able to just brainstorm and come up with new ideas for this brand and just really focus on, again, like I said, how can I be best in service um, is something that I've been able to cope with. And, you know, I, I feel like I've built community in doing so. So uh, that's been really, really helpful. That was um, very inspiring. I know personally, um, my father had just gotten over the COVID-19. Um, mm. Yeah, it was it was rough. But we got through because yeah. of um, positivity, honestly, and the right yeah. steps, which a lot of people aren't taking. But it's um, and that's apparent. But if if we all work together, it would it would be a lot easier. You know what I mean? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I think it's also very important because you know during this time now, I'm hearing so many people like are actually resting and taking time to rest. And I think that's one of the greatest forms of resistance, you know, especially, you know, in our community, we have to go, go, go. We can't afford to take days off. We can't exactly. afford to enjoy the luxuries of life because we're cold. And also just the way that things are systemically built for us, we can't rest because we have to keep up. If we rest, if we rest, and then we don't go to work, then the bills don't get paid. Then lose yep. a house, And then things like, you know what I mean? Yep. We don't have that luxury. So, you know, the world has literally been on pause. So I think, it's been an opportunity for things to rest, like, you know, skin's getting clearer, you know, getting time, you do what right. you gotta do, life is a little better, you know, so, I mean, it's, in terms of just, like, things to recalibrate um, on, and just take a step back, so, absolutely, it's most definitely a challenging time, because you want to be safe, you want to be social distancing, you're worried about your loved ones, you know, you don't want to be in contact with people, but I think, in totality, Really a time to rest, take a pause, and just recalibrate so we can have a better new normal, right? So we can have yeah. a better society where everybody's, you know, focused on and coming up with new systems um, that focus on everybody. So I think it's really been a forced pause for sure. Um, and more things are coming to light. I agree. So, mm -hmm. speaking of moving forward and progressing, what comes next for you and the Silhouette brand? I know we spoke a little bit earlier about what you guys have going on so if you guys can share go ahead yeah so right now we do have a campaign called voices where we're sharing different reflections from people about what it means to be black and what this 
movement, you know, Black Lives Matter, this new um, part breadth of the movement really means to people and just things that they could share one message to the world about what this movement means to them right now, what would it be? So we've gotten so many great responses, we're consistently sharing. So um, that's something uh, whoever's watching, people like to share, that would be great. Um, but also working on some really exciting projects, some community-based events, um, some virtual and some for hopefully the top of next year, super excited. So um, would love to, um, continue talking about that and have some, you know, visibility with that in the future. But focusing on things is to continue building community. So super excited to see what happens, what comes next, and hopefully really building our team and uh, again building our visibility. So super excited, and um, yeah. All right, thank you for that. So okay. before we wrap it up, do you have any parting words you'd like to share with the audience? Any words of inspiration for me or anyone else? Yeah, sure. Honestly, again, whether it be, you know, this pandemic or just in general, just the importance of not moving with fear and truly having faith. Um, it's something that we kind of throw out sometimes or you see in my little memes and they like, tell you, you know, don't be fearful, but it's a lot it's easier said than done. So working, consistently working and being mindful of abandoning that fear and working to, you know, just live in your truth and live in like your awesome, like authentic self and just doing what you need to do and always striving to be of service in whatever way that manifests itself. All right. Well, thank you for that. And thank you, Savannah. And thank you, everybody who's listening. And I guess we'll wrap it up. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. No problem. Have a good one. You as well. Bye-bye.